Alright, so by way of introduction, I wanted to talk about some of the equipment that I carry on duty as an armed guard. I carry my trusty 9mm Beretta 92FS. Um, it's a nice little gun, you know, it fits real big. I, you know, like the laser that I installed in it. I like the the walnut grip. So you turn off the laser. Um, nice safety. Don't want to accidentally shoot myself. Um, fortunately, I I've, I've never had to use this on duty, but I have had a couple of people pull knives on me, which was pretty scary. But fortunately, I was able to talk them into putting the knives away before I had to use this to defend myself. Um, before I shoot somebody, I mean obviously you want to use the least amount of force necessary. Which is why you bring with you on duty a variety of options um, to take care of whatever threat you're being presented with. So I wanted to talk about some non-lethal defensive options that I've got at my disposal. Um, this is my OC, police grade mace, that I can carry because BSIS from the state of California gives me the permit to carry police grade mace, but not in the same quantities that police can carry. I, I don't have as much. I also carry two sets of handcuffs on duty so when I've got my prisoners I can keep them locked up you know as an armed guard I've had a number of opportunities to use these handcuffs to make sure that the prisoners that I have stay my prisoners and that they they don't escape or anything like that Whenever I'm on duty, I also always have in the back of my mind the Holy Bible, and the commands and the and the rules and and the the reasons that I have to do my job that I do as an armed guard. I mean, the whole reason why I'm an armed guard is because of some of the commands that are in the Holy Bible. And some of those things are things that I want to be able to talk about today. On duty, I also carry my trusty C2 taser. Um, this, this is the taser that, you know, you can see the green light to show that it's ready to fry somebody. The uh, charge that shoots 15 feet into the back. Trust me, it hurts. I got myself tased with this with this very taser um, just in case I ever have to go to court and have to explain that yeah I know how horrible this equipment is I know how horrible this feels and I wouldn't want to do it to anybody I wouldn't want to cause anybody pain but if somebody were to threaten somebody else, if somebody were to threaten me, then I'll use this, I'll, I'll use this, I'll use whatever I have to, to defend my country, to defend the people that I love, to defend even a total stranger from evil. And I carry things like the C2, I carry things like mace so that I can use the least amount of force necessary to make the arrest, to make the bad guys go away. As a last resort, of course, if I have to, I'm not afraid to use that. And I want to talk about some of the biblical responsibilities that we have, have as Christians to defend ourselves, to obey government to 
defend the innocent from the wicked in this world. Over the years, Christians haven't done a particularly good job of talking about the need for self-defense. We haven't done a particularly good job of talking about why we as Christians should protect other people. Why we as Christians should put our lives on the line if necessary to, to protect our family, to protect our neighborhood, to protect the people that we love. I, I want to read from the Bible. Um, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And God doesn't want us taking revenge. God doesn't want us going out and looking for violence. He doesn't want us to be angry people. Jesus said that he doesn't want us to murder other people, as, as we all know from the Ten Commandments. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm encouraging murder, because I'm not. A, a lot of people want to misconstrue what I say. And they want to make it sound like I'm encouraging death, or that I'm encouraging people to kill other people. And I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. Rather, you shall not commit murder. That's a commandment, and you can't get away from it. And the last thing that I would do is tell you that you cannot listen to the commands of God. We must listen to the commands of God. We must not murder. Jesus said, You have heard the ancients were told you shall not commit murder. And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everybody who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his buddy, brother, you are good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. The last thing that I'm doing is saying that you should go out looking for a fight. The last thing that I'm saying is that you should go out and try and find someone to kill. As Christians, we need to be the peacemakers in this world. As Christians, we need to be the salt of the earth. As Christians, we need to do everything that we can not to promote violence. In the past it was taught an eye for an eye. But Jesus tells us not to resist evil. But if someone hits us on the cheek, to give them the other cheek. And if someone sues us at the law for, let's say, a hundred bucks, Give them two hundred dollars. Don't, don't create fights. Don't create controversies. Don't, don't look for something to fight about because God's not going to honor that. Give to those that ask us. Love your enemies. These are the commands of Jesus. We need to be obedient as Christians to the commands that God has for us. And I'm not looking for a loophole. I'm, I'm not talking about um, doing things that are not okay, but they're okay in this one instance. It's never okay to murder. It's never okay to take our own vengeance on somebody. That's never okay. That's never right. In our, in our lives, we always have to be the peacemakers. 
we always have to be the salt of the earth. We always have to be willing to do what we have to, whatever the cost, whatever the consequence, to preserve peace, to preserve harmony, to preserve hope, based on the truth of the biblical revelation. Based on the truth in the biblical revelation, part of that peace, part of that harmony includes the presence of justice. It includes the presence of law from governments that God has put in place. For instance, I'm, I'm an armed guard for the state of California. I do security, make sure that murderers don't escape from prison, make sure that rapists don't escape from prison, make sure that gang members don't escape from prison. When they're in the hospitals, it's frequently my job to make sure that they don't escape. And as a Christian, I take it as a divine duty, as, as a justice, that God has put me on this earth to enforce this justice, to enforce this peace. And that's flowing from the pages of the Bible. It says in Romans 13, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except what's been established by God. If you resist the authority, if, if you resist Californian government, if you resist American government, you receive to yourselves damnation. In Romans 13, chapter, verse 2. Um, and that's because the rulers um, are not a terror to good works. They're, they're not something that we do just because a lot of gang members get together and decide to oppress the people. But we go and we obey government because... God commands us to because he commands us to obey the authority in Romans 13. And that means that we have to obey. And God's given the power of the sword to governments. Um... For rulers, in verse 3, are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Don't be afraid of the power. Do what is good, and you will have praise from the power. You will have praise from the authority. For he is a minister of God. The authorities are ministers of God for our good. But if we do evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. From my King James Bible. Um, so God says that governments bear the sword. In, in, in my case, the state of California has issued me a license based on the authority that God's given them to issue me a license to carry a pistol, which is the modern-day equivalent of the sword. And I use that to defend. I use that to protect, if necessary. And this is something that God wants us to be able to do. This is something that God wants us to do, to protect our home. To protect our loved one. To protect the people that we care about in government, in public, in the home. This is why God has us form armies to protect our nation. It's why he has us form police forces to protect our neighborhoods. It's why we, as, as Christian husbands and fathers, brothers, why we men need to rise up and protect our women. It's, it's why I bought 
uh, taser for my wife so that she can protect herself because girls have a right to defend themselves from the wicked men in this generation, the rapists, the, the thieves, the people who would wickedly take their lives. And this is a good thing because real peace that we as Christian peacemakers have to do is not just about the absence about, of conflict, it's about the presence of justice. It's about the present. It's about the preservation of our liberty. It's about the preservation of our personal peace, our personal space. God doesn't want us to wick, resist evil wickedly. We don't resist wickedness with wickedness. We, we, we resist wickedness with the tools that God has given us. And we might not like doing it, but we need to protect. We need to defend. We need to preserve justice and liberty. In Jesus' name, and we need the Holy Spirit inside of us to guide us, to lead us, so that we can use our tools wisely.